When we talk about Skaven anti-large infantry, we either think about the Chaffee options, Skaven slaves and clan rats who rely on their numbers to delay enemy advances, or the more elite storm vermins who have enough stat line to drag down large monsters, but we often overlook the middle ground, which is ironically what they are exactly designed to do. Ashen Triads, the only sneaky pole arm infantry in the entire game, and actually one of my favorite Skaven units. These guys with their unique attributes can do some interesting things in battle, and in today's video, we'll be talking about the stealthy vanguard anti-large infantry. To begin with, let's talk about the stat line of these Ashen Triads and their position in the whole Skaven roster. If we compare them to the basic clan rat spears, of course, we can see that they have much better stats across the board, albeit at the cost of some HP and unit models, since they only have 72 models instead of the usual 160 for a Skaven unit. However, when we look at the Storm Vermin with Halberds, their stat lines actually are quite surprising because, first of all, leadership wise, they actually have more leadership than Storm Vermin with Halberds. With 4 more leadership, this makes them more reliable in the late game scenario, and on top of that, they will be buffed up further by the strength in numbers with another 6 leadership in combat. Also, melee defense with plus 8, so that means they will have 36 melee defense in general. Honestly, not bad for a mid-tier pole arm defensive unit. Even if you compare them to the elite storm vermins, the difference in melee defense is still only 5. And then in the other stat lines, the Ashen Trash just trumps the storm vermins with more melee attack, better weapon strength, and also a lot more speed since they are actually a light infantry. Even after the debuff from strength and numbers, they still have 49 which makes them one of the fastest infantry in the entire game. On top of that, their lack of armor when compared to storm vermins is mitigated by that 30% physical resistance. Considering that the Ashen Triads only come at a cost of 700, which is 30% cheaper than the storm vermins, this is definitely not a bad deal. If you're looking at a single model of Ashen Triad, you're definitely getting more than what you get from a single model of Storm Vermin with Halberds. In general, Ashen Triads just have a solid stat line, excellent leadership for Skavens, acting as a great middle ground between the crappy Skaven Chaff and the more elite but also more expensive Storm Vermins. Now let's talk about the functions of Ashen Triads on the battlefield. Their anti-large and charged defense does make them a rather obvious backline defender, but the Skaven doesn't lack backline options. If they want to go cheap, they can go Skaven Slaves and Clan Rats, and if they want to go elite, they always have Storm Vermins. But why take Triad? That's because they have a couple unique attributes that give them a very interesting role in the Skaven backline defenses. The first unique attribute of the Ashen Triads is their ability to hide in any terrain. Being the only pole arm unit in the entire game to have stock, this gives the Ashen Triads quite an interesting application on the battlefield. Just like here with the Skaven vs Greenskins, imagine you are the Greenskin player not able to see the Ashen Triads, thinking that the Avalanche Mortars are wide open so you issue a charge order for the Squid Hoppers to go into the Avalanche Mortars, but then at the last second, the Ashen Triads pops up, intercepting the Squid Hoppers and preventing them from landing a clean charge on the Skaven weapons teams. At this point, the Greenskins have already committed into the backline charge, and the player's attention is probably turned over somewhere else, forcing the Greenskins' cavalry to get stuck in this prolonged melee fight being flooded by a bunch of Red Ogres and anti-large armor-piercing infantry. This is the unique application of Ashen Triads on defense. Their stock attribute allows them to execute a bait and ambush tactic to surprise enemy cavalry with an unexpected defender. And if you are really dedicated to the ambush, you can even activate their bound concealment bomb to help the triads remain hidden a slight bit longer, just so your opponent would not discover the trap until the very, very last second, making it even harder for your opponent to react as they commit themselves to the charge. On top of that, stock provides additional protection against artillery since your opponent cannot target what they can't see, keeping your triad safe from bombardment. Another attribute of the Triads is their minus 50% armor debuff with their Weeping Blade effect. It allows the Triads to half the armor of whatever target they are engaged with and expose them to a lot of non-armor piercing damage. 
It doesn't really help themselves since they do have a lot of armor piercing, but it synergizes really well with the non armor piercing troops on the Skaven's roster. In this battle replay, courtesy to Mr. Teufel once again, we are seeing a bunch of Skull Crushers being hit by the Triad's Weeping Blade and then the torrent of missile fire coming in from the Night Runners, quickly chipping away their health despite their original 130 armor as they now only have 65. It's not even been a minute since the Skull Crushers charged into the Triad and they are already on the verge of destruction. Given that the Triad's purpose is to engage armored units, especially armored cavalry and monsters, this means they'll often maximize that Weeping Blade armor debuff against their intended target. Of course, the Weeping Blade doesn't only benefit the Skaven Skirmishers, there are also other non-armor piercing units that can enjoy some of that armor debuff from the Skaven roster. For example, Assassin and the Ashen Sorcerer here. Doesn't have the most armor piercing, but thanks to the Weeping Blade, they can still do massive damage to Boris Toddbringer. With a bit of help from Deathmaster Snitch, the Ashen Trio quickly nuked the health bar of Boris Toddbringer forcing him to retreat from the engagement. Aside from the Ashen Sorcerer and Assassin, other units like Skaven Slaves, Clan Rats, Plague Monks and also Wolf Rats with Poison can also get a bit of damage boost from this armor debuff. Ashen Triads are not only a defensive unit as they can perform offensive actions thanks to their speed advantage. Having 49 speed even with strength and numbers debuffing them, they can slip through enemy gaps and go for enemy missile backline. Just like here, we can see some Ashen Triads already getting on top of some handgunners, cutting them down, silencing those missile firepower from the Empire. Being one of the fastest infantry in the entire game, this mobility gives the triads a lot of flexibility, allowing them to quickly reposition and exploit the gaps in enemy defenses. The speed of Ashen triads also give them the ability to pressure and pursue, even against some slower cavalry. Yes, that's right, even cavalry, just like here the Chaos Knights with lances from Korn. Being threatened by the triads anti-large armor piercing, they were forced to pull back, but even with that 70 speed, the triads still managed to maintain a relatively close distance to their targets. And as soon as the knights stop in the tree line, the triads managed to get the jump on them. And if the triads lay their eyes on slower targets like regular missile infantry or monstrous infantry like the lead belchers, then these targets are absolutely screwed as they simply do not have enough speed to escape the grasp of the Ashen Triads. As for the major weakness of Ashen Triads, it is quite obvious. Despite their decent melee stats and also physical resistance helping them hold against low tier infantry, they can't fight against dedicated damage dealers like these Forsakens. They simply do not have the armor, HP pull and unit models to tank that damage. Also, being Skavens, they are quite light in weight, so they also don't have the mass to bog down large monstrous units. This makes the Triads a rather glass cannon unit and players need to be careful when choosing the target to engage. And also provide them with adequate support, for example, throwing in extra mass like say Red Ogres to stop enemies from pulling out of the engagement. Now let's do a bit of a summary for Ashen Triads as a unit. Their stat lines is definitely decent for a mid-tier infantry, but their greatest value comes from their unique attributes and abilities, allowing them to perform functions on the battlefield that no other pole arms are capable of. Having stock allows them to avoid enemy detection, protecting them from artillery targeting and more importantly, helping them to lay ambush against enemy mobility. And then their ability to provide armor debuffs via their Weeping Blade synergizes quite well with other Skaven units, boosting the damage of units like Skaven Skirmishers and Assassins. On the other hand, they can also go on the offensive, using their speed to their advantage, pressuring enemy mobility as well as missile units. Of course, being a unit with an emphasis on stealth, they are quite fragile themselves, though this can be compensated by their 30% of physical resistance and relatively high leadership for a Skaven, making them a rather reliable late game unit, as they will still be fighting valiantly despite taking substantial damage in earlier stages of battle. Of course, only valiantly by Skaven standards, but still. As some shady rat man, you take what you can get. Being much better than chaff units like Skaven Slaves and Clan Reds, while also being more cost efficient and versatile than elites like Storm Vermins. 
Ashwin Triads is definitely the underrated unit remain hidden from the meta for way too long. While hiding might be their specialty, perhaps it is finally time for players to bring them out to the spotlight and start using them more in battles.